Row crop agriculture is facing a growing problem in Mississippi. Slowly but surely, the Delta is running out of water for use in irrigation. However, an Extension Service sponsored program is turning the tide, so to speak, on this problem. In this week's feature story, we take a look at one water conservation tool now being implemented by Delta farmers that appears to be reducing the amount of irrigation needed to grow a crop while improving producers' profits. The project allowed for what you might call a friendly competition between researcher and farmer as far as who knows when to irrigate best. These two soybean fields separated by a farm road represent two different approaches to irrigation. One field is equipped with a scientific tool to determine when it's time to water. In the other, the farmer just uses a traditional method, a visual inspection of soil and crop to decide when to irrigate. These fields at Simmons Planning Company in Arcola are one of the demonstration sites in the Delta for RISER, an acronym for Row Crop Irrigation Science and Extension Research. We feel like water is our most valuable resource. Next to the land that we plant crops on, water is our most valuable resource and we're interested in doing what we can to conserve and properly use that water. For the demonstration project, Bubba Simmons allowed extension irrigation specialist Jason Kruitz to install soil moisture sensors in one field and for Kruitz to make all decisions as far as when to irrigate that field. The sensors were placed at depths of 6, 12, 24, and 36 inches in the soil. But in our extension locations, all of them we set up with about the $500, $550 package where we got the data to the edge of the field on an LCD screen uh, where they can get a real-time reading of the moisture status at those various depths and also a graph of the moisture status over the last several months. Meanwhile, in the adjoining soybean field on the farm, Bubba Simmons called all the shots as far as when to water. He would start the pump on his irrigation well to put water on the field based on a shovel inspection of the soil and the visual condition of the plants. There was no scientific accuracy involved in the decision-making process. Towards the end of the growing season, records indicate the field with the water sensors here had at least two fewer irrigations with no adverse effects on soybean yield. And that was typical across the Delta in the sensor-equipped fields enrolled in the riser program. We, we typically start uh, irrigating uh, soybeans just as soon as we see a flower uh, come up. Our producers feel real comfortable about running an irrigation shot down then. Uh, most of our sites, we were able to hold them up a week or two past that. Uh, so that was probably saving them irrigation event then. And here at uh, Bubba Simmons Farm, uh, because we had the soil moisture sensors in, uh, at this location, we can see the fields coming down. We were really able to judge uh, if we had enough water in that profile to get us able to avoid that last irrigation shot. So in Bubba's fields that he was managing, he sent one more shot of water down, but our sensor data was telling us that we probably had enough moisture to get to or six and a half, which is the point that our soybean specialist in Mississippi wants us to ensure that we have adequate moisture to that point to not cost us any good water. So again, able to save an irrigation on the front and back side. Northeast of Arcola, near Ruleville, Mississippi, David Arant is another farmer who also enrolled some fields in the riser program. I just kind of wanted to uh, be able to utilize our water more efficiently. I mean, water is a, it's not a, a infinite resource. Once again, soil moisture sensors like this were put into the soil in a field as part of the demonstration project. On this farm, they were placed at depths of 6 inches, 12 inches, and 24 inches. In addition to being connected to an LED screen at the edge of the field for monitoring, David also had a handheld meter to check moisture by walking out into the field where the sensors were buried. David says he saw how the moisture sensors could make a big difference and save him money, especially with his corn crop. I had um, three different pl test plots, if you will, uh, on some, some of my corn fields, ranging from um, kind of really lighter soil all the way to heavy clay. And, um, you know, the moisture meters on the corn, it saved me anywhere from one to two irrigations. On, on one field, I only irrigated it um, twice, you know, versus uh, four times for other fields. And, you know, that's kind of, you know, the moisture meters kind of stagger your, your, um, your irrigation, so you increase the likelihood of catching the rain. You're saving money by not um, having to burn diesel or electricity to, to irrigate. So it's a pretty big savings overall.
Extension irrigation specialist Jason Krutz says the moisture sensors not only improve a farmer's profitability, but they do it while maintaining or even improving crop yields, almost guaranteed. What we saw in corn was that uh, it was potential to slightly increase the yield. It wouldn't be much. We're talking about five, six, seven bushels with you know approximately 47 to 50 percent less water uh, than our, our tip producers are typically applying. Producers in the riser program are finding the sensor technology to be not only valuable, but very practical and useful on a day-to-day -day basis. There's something that's almost fun to look at and see uh, what a rainfall event does to soil moisture, to see what an irrigation event does to soil moisture, and to see what it does at different depths. It's something I check daily. That's the other thing, you know, after say a half inch rain, one thing that I've been amazed about is how um, well the soil responds to even just a half inch rain. You know, um, at the surface it might be uh, bone dry before the rain, then you get a half inch and your, um, your surface looks pretty good, but you're kind of questioning what is it doing, you know, at the six inch depth, 12 inch or 24 inch depth, and that's kind of really where those meters uh, come into play. The positive experience of these and other producers with the moisture sensors is exactly what Jason Kruitz was hoping for, especially when compared to other available irrigation scheduling technologies. When we chose to uh, move out to our extension locations, the soil moisture sensor, because we it's something that a producer can touch, uh, can see, and uh, they're very visual just like we are and seem to really respond to the information they glean from that. So uh, seeing the response from our producers in our extension locations and talking with them, how they responded to these soil moisture sensors and the data they can see in real time, I felt like that was gonna be the way to get them to adopt this uh, scheduling technology as rapidly as possible. And that's the bottom line goal of the RISER program, to make Mississippi farmers better and more efficient irrigators using moisture sensors or other tools. The end result is less over-irrigation while maintaining adequate soil moisture with no yield loss. From the Mississippi Delta, I'm Leighton Span reporting. And if you're interested in information on using soil moisture sensors, you can watch this story again on our website, Facebook page, or YouTube page. We'll also have the contact information for Jason Krutz on our website, and that's farmweek.msucares.com. And Leighton, eventually, cell phone, you'll call, you won't even have to go to the edge of the field right. to get the info.